Okay, now let's proceed to cells. Uh, we all know that all living things are composed of cells. Um, that means that all living things, whether it could be a plant or animals or a microorganisms or even a human itself, are composed of cells. Cells is a membrane that, uh, covered structure that contains all living materials necessary for life. I will be discussing this further once that we uh, proceed to organelles for you to be able to understand it clearly. Next one is cells also called the building blocks of life. Of course, uh, like uh, what we have discussed previously, uh, it could be a multicellular or unicellular composed of one cell such as a uh, bacteria. For a multicellular, it could be plants or animals. Next one, the study of cells is called cell biology or cellular biology. Uh, cells from the Latin word cella meaning small room. Now let's proceed to the discovery of cell. Well, it all started with Robert Hooke uh, during 1665. Uh, he is the first person that, who coined the term cell. And he is also responsible for the beginning of cytology as a sub as a sub discipline in biology for Anton van Leeuwenhoek uh, during 1673 um, he discovered the bacteria and other microorganism and studied the structure of the plants and animals and tissue now let's proceed to the cell theory okay so as we all know that uh, because of this discovery right who started off from Anton van Leeuwenhoek and also uh, Robert Hooke, uh, scientists later discover a lot of more about cells using more powerful microscope. And because of that, because of that discovery, they come up with the development of a cell theory during 1839 by uh, Tudor Swan and, and Matthew Jacob Swallenden. They come up uh, with this theory such as they say that cells are the smallest living thing because it is microscopic it has to it, we cannot see it by the naked eye it has to be you we have to use a microscope to for us to be able to see it every live every living things is made up of cell of course uh, plants animals humans are made up of cells cells divide to form new cells that means that there is a reproduction such as it will undergo mitosis okay so these are things uh, that, that they have come up with a cell theory now to explain to you about the organization of life or what we call the levels of biological organization uh, the first one is cell it is considered to be a um, the smallest functional unit of life okay and it was it made up of uh, what we call the tissues a tissue is a group of cells performing a similar function and of course the organs um, these are a group of different tissue form or joint structurally and cooperating functionally to perform a specialized task uh, one good example for organs are heart liver lungs those are some example of organs and for the organ system um, these are group of organs that contributes to the performance of one or more major functions. So some example for the organ systems are the skeletal system, nervous system, cardiovascular system. Those are example of the organ system. And of course, we'll come up with an organism, which is uh, it. It good example for this one are ma uh, human. Uh, animals and plants of course because these are living these are individual living things okay so now let's proceed to the types of cells we do have two types of cells we have the prokaryotic cells we have the eukaryotic cells and of course uh, the difference between the two the eukaryotic cells uh, cells that do have a nucleus they do have membrane bound organelles and of course it is a linear DNA and good example for this one are plants and animals while the prokaryotic cells are totally the opposite of the eukaryotic and the good example for this one are bacteria uh, these are unicellular so that means it only contains one cell now let's proceed to the parts of the cell 
or what we call the organelles. If we say organelles, it is also called as little organs. Okay? Uh, this, uh, the, the parts of the cells are composed of the cytoplasm, the cell membrane, cell wall, nucleus, nucleolus, uh, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, uh, mitochondria, chloroplasts, Golgi complex, vacuoles, and lysosomes. I will be discussing this to you uh, one by one for you to be able to understand it clearly. I also have some illustration for you to be able to understand it. Okay, but before we proceed to that, I want to see, show you first an illustration what's the difference between an animal cell and also a plant cell. If you will be able to uh, see that in the plant cell, there is a square shape size of the cell because of the cell wall, while on the animal cell, it, can, it is a spherical shape. Its, its shape is a spherical shape okay so now let's proceed to the parts and function of the cell let's start let's start with the first organelle which is the cytoplasm if we say cytoplasm it is a it contains a jelly like fluid inside the cell okay and <clears throat> the organelles are found floating here so that means it is a semi-fluid um, enclosed within the plasma membrane it consists fluid cytosol and also organelles and other structures okay so there's where the cytoplasm is located at so it this is the cell the cytoplasm is inside okay next one let's proceed to the cell membrane for the cell membrane it is considered to be the uh, protects the cell from invaders keep the cytoplasm inside allows the materials in and out of the cell to show you an illustration how does it look like as you can see here this is the cell there's is the outer covering of the cell is where the cell membrane is located at for the cell membrane also it is a protein studded uh, phospholipid bilayer that envelopes the cell so it covers the whole cell itself okay so the next one is what we call the cell wall. By the way, for the cell wall, it only has the the plant cell only contains cell wall. The the animals doesn't have. It provide it provides strength and support to the cell membrane. Okay, and also gives the plant cell their square shape, like what I've said earlier. Uh, for the cell wall, it is a contains a polysaccharide substance that found outside the plasma membrane. Of the plant cell okay next one let's proceed to the nucleus for the nucleus it is considered to be the control center of the cell or what we call the brain itself where the DNA is found okay and by the way it is like <clears throat> its shape is a spherical to show you an illustration here it is okay so it is a spherical shape this is the the nucleus it's located at and surround surrounded by a double membrane contains nucleus and also chromosomes so the nucleus and also the chromosomes is presently found inside of the nucleus okay so for the nucleus where the nucleus is located inside the nucleus okay it stores materials to make ribosomes it's found inside the cell like what i've said uh, for the nucleus it's a rounded mass within the nucleus okay it contains rna <coughs> excuse me and proteins it contains rna and proteins so the nucleus is who produce ribosomes okay and if there is uh, ribosomes, those ribosomes eventually will uh, transport proteins and other materials, okay? So for ribosomes, it is a site of protein synthesis. Amino acids are joined together to make proteins, are found in the cytoplasm or attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, smallest but the most abundant organelle. So, let's go back to 
my illustration here. So, in the nucleolus, where the ribosome has been produced, so once it, uh, it's already ready to release, automatically the ribosome will go out of the nucleus, going out to the nucleus. It goes to the cytoplasm, and also goes directly to the endoplasmic reticulum. So for the endoplasmic reticulum, by the way, let me show it to you, the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so if the nucleus where the ribosome has been released, automatically the ribosome, this color green over here, will attach to the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so once it is attached, it is already called as a rough endoplasmic reticulum for those endoplasmic reticulum has no uh, ribosomes attached we call that a smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay again endoplasmic reticulum is an internal delivery system makes lipids and other materials for, uh, for inside and outside of the cell it breaks down drug and harmful chemicals may be covered with ribosomes or like what I've said, it could be a rough ER or it could be a smooth ER without ribosomes, right? And it's usually found near the nucleus. Are we clear? Now, let's proceed to mitochondria. It is considered to be the powerhouse of the cell. To show you how does it look like, here it is, okay? Where the energy has been supplied <clears throat> for the need of the cell and also by the way um, once that uh, the energy has been produced it will transform into ATP or what we call the adenosine triphosphate for cellular respiration and it also surrounded by two membranes as well <clears throat> now let's proceed to Chloroplus. For chloroplus, uh, usually chloroplus is only um, present in plant cell uh, because it contains chlorophyll that produces the green pigment of the plant. Okay, the main function, of course, of chloroplus is to absorb some lights to help plants make nutrients for energy. Okay, now let's proceed to the Golgi complex. Okay, for the Golgi complex or what we call the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body, so after, you know, after from the endoplasmic reticulum, you still remember that, uh, automatically those proteins will now go or those lipids, proteins will automatically go to, to the Golgi complex, okay, and bind to a, another substance. Okay, so like for example, um, the lipid will bind with the protein, okay? It binds inside the Golgi complex, okay? So materials are pack, uh, packaged in uh, vesicles for shipment outside of the cell. Uh, called as a membrane-bound sac. It is also creation of lysosome where lysosome, another organelle, has been produced inside the Golgi complex. By the way, for those um, packed material, like what I've said, uh, has been bond, like for example, a lipid and a protein has been bond, automatically it, go, uh, it is inside the Golgi complex. Once it is already for release, it goes directly out of the, the, the Golgi complex and, and of course, go directly outside of the cell as well and do its function. Okay? Now, let's proceed to another one, which is the vacuole. For the vacuole, it stores water and other, plant, and other liquids. Uh, large vacuoles found in plants. Uh, in plants, has bigger vacuole compared or larger vacuole com compared to animals. Uh, lysosomes. Okay, for lysosomes, uh, we have uh, it digests or break down the materials found in the in the vesicles with enzymes, chemicals, get rid of waste, protects the, the cell against invaders, 
found in animal cells. So again, it is only found in animal cells like in eukaryotic cells. Uh, why is it that there is no um, lysosome which is found in plant cell? Lysosomes are not needed in, by, in the plant cells because they have cell walls that are tough enough to keep the large foreign substance that, um, that the lysosome should, uh, would usually digest out of the cell. So that's why lysosome is not present in the plant cell anymore. Next one, we do have the cytoskeleton. Our protein fibers that gives the cell in shape offer support and facilitate movements aiding in proper cell division through two main components. So the cytoskeleton is also serve as a protection and also helps as a frame giving the shape giving the shape of the cell its form, okay? So it also serves as a support as well. So it has two main components. The first one is the microfilaments or what we call the actin filaments and the other one is the microtubules or what we call the tubulins. Okay? So again, it has the same function. It supports the cell. It also gives uh, the size or the shape itself okay, of the cell. Uh, to form a sooner to be uh, to form a cell division as well okay uh, to show you the difference between uh, an animal cell a plant cell okay as you can see here in the plant cell to show it to you the cell membrane is located here where the cytoplasm again it's inside the cell right it's a jelly like fluid the nucleus is inside which is uh, in the middle part the nucleolus is uh, located inside the nucleus where the ribosomes has been produced. The DNA or the genetic materials is present inside the nucleus. The ER or what we call endoplasmic reticulum, okay, where uh, uh, once that the ribosomes has been attached to it. And the mitochondria serve as the powerhouse of the cell. It gives energy and of course the Golgi complex or what we call the Golgi body, uh, Golgi apparatus. Okay, uh, this where after after from the endoplasmic reticulum, the substance will automatically goes to the Golgi complex that will bond together such as the protein and also the, um, the lipids will automatically bond together. And once that it's already ready, automatically it goes out of the cell to do its function. Next one, we have, of course, the ribosomes. Again, it came from the nucleolus for protein synthesis. The lysosomes, of course, it is the one of the defense mechanism, right? It's usually found nearly in only in animal cells. There is no the, there is no uh, present in a plant cell. Uh, chloroplast, it is, gives the green pigment because there is presence of chlorophyll, right? And of course, the vacuole, uh, vacuole is stored water, it serves as a storage of water. Usually found in plants, has a bigger vacuole or larger vacuole compared to the animal cell has a very small. And of course, okay, just to compare both animal cell and and animals uh, plant cell as you can see here the only difference it has that animal cell contains lysosomes while plant cell doesn't have for the plant cell uh, it contains cell wall and chloroplast while the animal cell doesn't have this is the difference between the two